Local news about local people. This is Newslink Indiana. Hello and thank you for joining us on NewslinkIndiana.com for Wednesday, December 14th, 2005. I'm Alyssa Ivinson. The son of a state representative involved in a fatal hit and run last February has pleaded guilty as part of a plea agreement. 24-year-old Andrew Saunders pled guilty today to leaving an accident that resulted in death and operating a vehicle while intoxicated. Police say it happened February 4th after Saunders was drinking at the Elks Lodge in Newcastle. Thomas Jackman was hit and died the next day. Saunders, the son of State Representative Tom Saunders, originally faced charges of reckless homicide. Sentencing is set for January 3rd in Newcastle. Saunders could face up to nine years in prison. With only two weeks left before Medicare Plan D begins, the registration process has hit a few bumps. Newslink Indiana's Sarah McKenna tells us what can be done to ensure coverage won't be a problem. The new prescription drug coverage, Medicare Plan D, has had a rough start. It's going slowly, but I think it's going well. It is complex, but it's going to be a very big benefit for many people. I'll probably save people that don't have prescription drug coverage now about 50% of what they've been spending. The problem? Too much information in a short time. People are making it too hard and it, it's very confusing to them uh, once they decide this is something very hard and over their head. The process begins at the Social Security Office. From there, agencies such as Livestream Services can help sort through the information. Make sure to bring a list of all medications you take, as well as the Medicare and You 2006 book that should have came in the mail. Then, register. With Medicare Plan D only a month into registration, scams are already starting to pop up by phone calls asking for personal information. They call and say they're from a local bank. Uh, Old National's been one that they have used. And they say that they uh, want to verify some information. And they want to verify your checking account, your social security number. But Medicare programs never ask for money up front. If this happens to you, call the police. And if you've given out personal information, close your checking account immediately. In Muncie, Sarah McKenna, Newslink Indiana. Old National Bank says they receive four to five reports of the scam calls each week. You can find more information right here on NewslinkIndiana.com about protecting yourself or applying for Plan D. Henry County may not be the best place to take a deep breath. That's according to a recent Environmental Protection Agency report. Newslink Indiana's Holly Samuels has more. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency released a report that ranked Henry County's air pollution the sixth highest in the country. The report may not be surprising to all residents. You're not surprised? No. But most government agencies are trying to decide what to make of the numbers. This is a report that was released by the United States Environmental Protection Agency. As you can see, it looks like a bunch of numbers, and that's exactly what the health department here in Newcastle is saying. The report is such a mystery to Newcastle's Environmental Health Agency that officials ask the Indiana Department of Environmental Management for an explanation. Until they're answered, officials didn't want to comment. Some residents believe the local government knows why the numbers are so high. You only see what you want to see and hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil. The report names Allegheny Ludlam as the biggest polluting industry in Newcastle. Managers at the plant did not want to comment. The factories do not care because everything is done in the name of their profit and the Indiana Department of Environmental Management does not care because all they're doing is rubber stamping the applications when they come through. Whether or not there is a problem with industrial air pollution in Henry County. Newcastle, Henry County has been very good to me. In Newcastle, Holly Samuels, Newslink, Indiana. Henry County is the only Indiana county named in the top 10. The number one county on the report is Washington County, Ohio. Anderson High School's football team will have a new look, but not on the field, but the field itself. Tuesday, the school board passed a $9.3 million bond for Anderson High School and Anderson Highland. Anderson High School will spend $2 million to upgrade its athletic facilities. Some board members are concerned about the spending so much money, but Anderson High School's principal says the renovations are necessary updates to an aging facility. I mean, it will be beautiful, and it will be a great facility for our kids to, to use. Um, but it's, you know, I mean, we're a working class community, and this is a working class football stadium, and that's what we need. 
Anderson Highland plans to add a new wing to the school. December's winter storms have forced road crews to salt streets earlier than usual. The Indiana Department of Transportation says it has 30 trucks in East Central Indiana working on roads. Each truck runs at least one 32-mile route and dispenses four tons of salt. Most trucks use pre-wetted salt to make the roads safer, faster. Despite the recent heavy workload, NDOT says that it has plenty of salt for the winter. And Newslink Indiana's forecaster Aaron Walker joins us now, and I believe we're going to be needing some of that salt pretty soon. Oh yeah, tonight, you know, we've seen snow for the last few days, and we look for that to continue throughout the next couple of days. Really, we're looking at a chance for a winter storm advisory much of the evening tonight, and it's going to be pretty nasty out there. We're expecting about five inches of snow possible, and <laughs> part of the northern areas of our viewing area, Blackford County, Jay County, you could see upwards of five inches. Much of the southern area, we're expecting about three to four. So Muncie, Delaware County, three to four range. Now for tonight, a wintry mix before it changes all over to snow. About two inches snowfall possible by the time you wake up tomorrow morning. 29 degrees for your low with your winds out of the south at 10 to 15 miles an hour. Precision cast picking up on that snowfall change about 1 a.m. tomorrow morning before it begins to really kind of break up Friday morning and it clears out for the next few days. Precision cast for that time period showing a uh, cold front rather just into our area before the heaviest precipitation begins 7 a.m. Thursday morning. That time through about the noon 1 o'clock hour. It's really going to clear out about 4 p.m. on Thursday before another system begins to move back into our area on Friday clearing out just in time for the weekend. Now for tomorrow, we're seeing some accumulating snow, five inches of snow possible, mostly before noon. After that, should clear out pretty well. 33 degrees for your high. Winds out of the south changing to the west at five to 10 miles an hour. Now your five-day forecast picking up on that snowfall again on Friday. And on Saturday, we finally see a chance for some sunshine back in our forecast. It's still gonna be pretty cold though, 29 for your high. Sunday and Monday, once again with some sun, but those highs are only about 24 degrees, 22 on Monday. So it's going to remain cold, but we have a chance for some snow, or sun rather, finally. Well, I'll just have to deal with the snow for a little bit longer than on the way to the Hold sunshine. on just a little longer. Okay, thank you, Erin. The newly expanded Newcastle Library is now open to the public again. It has been under construction since fall 2003. Since then, the original Carnegie Library was expanded by 40,000 square feet. New additions include a centralized circulation desk and improved access for the disabled. Well, I think it's absolutely beautiful. Um, I think that they've done a very good job of uh, combining the look of the original Carnegie, which is just right over in the other area, with the new portion. The grand opening for the updated library is scheduled for February 12th. Nine months of digging, hammering, and drilling has given birth to a new look at Ball State. News like Indiana's Colleen Borman shows how Ball State is celebrating the progress. Building up people's dreams is what Mark Ramey does best. I've just always loved, liked building stuff. And I've been doing it for 30 years. Since April, he's been working on the new communication and media building at Ball State University. When you build a building, you start with a foundation, and then you put the skeleton up, and you go from there, and all the other trades come in. And it can be complicated, but we get her done. The skeleton on the $21 million building is now complete. It will house all of the majors in the College of Communication, Information, and Media, a major advantage the educators say will give Ball State that winning edge. It will be an opportunity for our students to have what other students at other institutions won't have, um, and I think it will just help us to continue to grow in terms of our programs. Faculty and students marked the next phase with a topping out ceremony. This was a way for us to celebrate the fact that we are getting a new building and it's continuing progress. Inside from the cold, everyone had the opportunity to sign the final beam to the new building and meet the people behind the work. After a few snacks, the beam was then placed in a structure to mark the beginning to an end. In Muncie, Colleen Borman, Newslink, Indiana. The new building sits between the Robert Bell and the Ball Communications buildings. It's scheduled to be completed by summer 2007. And that is Newslink Indiana. Thank you for joining us. And you can always find local news about local people 24 hours a day right here at newslinkindiana.com.